Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Hour of the Time, today being the 13th of July, 2005, Wednesday, with a very exciting broadcast today. This is a uh, start of a, th- a little series we're going to be doing here on Hour of the Time on various New Age religious movements, dispensationalism, uh, today, Word of Faith, and... Um, I really need you to pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. We prefaced it with a couple of uh, Bill's broadcast from years ago. For instance, 592, 593, 591, out of the catalog. Uh, Who lied, Jesus of your church? What would Jesus say? Uh, Easter equals Ishtar. Most of that was taken from this uh, same researcher and his materials, and he's here as a guest with us. So be sure to have something to write with. Uh, We're going to be doing this for the next couple, three weeks. Various topics in this genre. Now remember, the Hour of the Time is listener supported. And we need your support very badly. Without your support through the donations for audio, broadcast, videos, publications, we cannot stay on the air. We cannot pay WBCQ so that we can be on the Monday through Friday live on 7415 and 9330. We can't have the website 365 days a year, no charge, etc. So you can either donate outright if you like, or or better yet, donate and request maybe certain materials that you would like from our research catalog. Now you can get a hard copy of the catalog for a $5 donation. It's massive. All Everything for the hour of the time from 1993 up. Or... You can simply go to the website, hourofthetime.com. That's hourofthetime.com. And look there under Hot Shop, and there's the tapes, videos, and books. Simply go there, and you can see everything that we have available for your research. There are literally thousands of broadcasts in our library covering a whole plethora of subjects. I'm sure you're bound to find something that Peaks your interest, will expand on research you're already doing, etc. You can also use PayPal through the website if you like. Uh, you don't have to have a PayPal account to use PayPal, by the way. Also, you can donate outright via PayPal if you would like to do that. And outright donations can simply be made to the Donate Here for Airtime. And that's simply the PayPal link right at the top of the front page of our website, hourthetime.com. Now, when you're there, be sure to browse our numerous research areas, news links, etc., and take a look around. You can see our goal to restore our constitutional republic, how we want to go about it, how we need to go about it to restore our freedoms, and the hour of the time is the venue to do that. There's no use just rehashing what's on the news every day, talking about Uh, woo-woo ships coming from the sky and green people. That is not going to restore this republic and your freedoms. Knowledge of how we got here in the first place so we can avoid those problems and correct them, that is how we fix this country and get it back on track with the restoration of a republican form of government as outlined by the Constitution of the United States. Now, if you'd like to write the hour of the time, it is P.O. Box 940, Eager, Arizona, 85925. That's Hour of the Time. P.O. Box 940, Eager, Arizona, 85925. Our website again, hourofthetime.com. Hourofthetime.com. My email address to email me directly is hourofthetime at hotmail.com. That's hourofthetime at hotmail.com. And our studio number to use because we're going to have the phone lines open with our guest in a couple, three days. And also to leave messages, share research, etc. is 928-333-2942. Again, that's 928-333-2942. Now we're going to go to just a quick one-minute musical break and proceed on with our guest, Rob. He's right here from the States, not Rob from Canada. So we don't get any confusion here, and you won't be emailing our co-host and webmaster with questions concerning these broadcasts that he may not be able to answer. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, remember, we need your support to continue research like this and put it out to the audience. You, ladies and gentlemen, are the ones who benefit. Please see it in yourselves to help maintain the operations and keep us on the air, our website going, etc. After this musical break, we will continue with this new series. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here at the Hour of the Time, and you're listening to the Hour of the Time on WBCQ The Planet, 7.415 megahertz and 9.330 megahertz out of Monticello, Maine. Now today, as I previously told you at the beginning of the show, we have a special guest on with us for the next several broadcasts. We're going to be discussing several subjects in the area of uh, the New Age religious movement, dispensationalism faithism, word of faith, today most specifically word of faith. Now Rob, uh, are you there? I'm here, Doyle. All right. Now Rob, um, well, what do you want to cover mainly today on today's broadcast? Well today we're going to be talking about uh, the word of faith movement and we're going to try to briefly summarize some main points of the word of faith movement and later on either today or the next shows we'll try to briefly uh, go in more detail of more uh, specific areas of the Word of Faith movement. But uh, just I guess I'll just start uh, briefly discussing what, a, what the Word of Faith movement is. And it's also known as the Health and Wealth Gospel, the Prosperity Gospel, and it's also known as, uh, they call it the Seed of Faith movement, and Name It, Claim It. And there's some good books out there. One book is a by a man named Hank Hanegraaff from California called Christianity in Crisis and he has a pretty good acrostic uh, that he created called FLAWS F-L-A-W-S and each each of the letters stands for something and there are five main points that he points out in his book of what the Word of Faith movement is and he says that the F in FLAWS stands for faith and faith the idea that the faith is a force and there's spiritual laws that we have we have to follow L stands for little gods, the idea that we're little gods now on earth. A is atonement atrocity, their idea that we're not really saved. Some of them teach that we're not really saved by the blood of Christ, but we're saved by Jesus dying spiritually and going to hell. And the W and the S stand for the wealth and sickness movement, the health and wealth uh, aspect of their doctrines. And briefly, we'll, I guess I'll just start... Uh, what each of the points mean and then we'll try to go in detail of each individual point. F stands for faith and faith. They believe that faith is an independent spiritual force and it's a basic law of the universe. They teach that God himself is a faith God. They believe that God created the universe by his faith, by the power of his, of his voice and his mouth. And this involved God in visualizing the universe in his imagination and then speaking it into existence with quote-unquote faith-filled words, saying such as, let it be, and believing that it would be. And they teach that man also can use the same power that God has to create our own realities on earth. And this involves visualizing what we want and then speaking it into existence with our faith-filled creative words. 
and they believe that we have to use so-called positive confession or positive words and this will bring forth positive things in our lives and the man who created that quoted that term positive confession is a man named Norman Vincent Peale and one of his mentors who created something called positive, uh, positive, positive thinking or possibility thinking is uh, a man named Robert Schuller who's also big in California and they, they call it one of their terms that they use is they call it a name it claim it movement whatever we, we name it by the power of our positive confessions and we claim it and we will get it whatever we want now Rob I have a question is that to mean that if I want to take something like maybe a cafeteria Christian out of the Bible and I say that it means this then it, then they're saying that if I say that then it's going to work for me because I've claimed it yeah Okay. You have to use positive confession and you have to use faith and you have to visualize it into your mind and affirm it by speaking it into existence and this, you know, this is what they believe. Okay. And they believe that, they also believe that f for, they believe in the force of faith and it's a, it's a basic law of life that people of any, really any religious belief can use and get results. So they teach that New Agers also can use the, the laws of the universe and the force of faith and to use it for their purposes. They teach that Christians must just simply learn to do what others are actually doing. For example, they, they use this, they believe in visualizing and affirmation as a part of the New Age movements, witchcraft believes in uh, creating your own realities in uh, Wicca. And they also, one of the other aspects they believe is the L from Hank Canagraph as little gods. They believe that Adam in paradise was God's equal and that he was quote unquote God manifested in the flesh. He was a God of planet earth. And they teach that man has no independent nature of his own. All that he can do is share either in God's natures or Satan's. So by giving into Satan, Adam in the Garden of Eden lost his godhood to the devil who thus became quite rightly and legally the god of this world. And by this sin, Adam experienced a diabolical re rebirth acquiring Satan's nature. But through Christ, they, they teach that through Christ, man can regain his lost godhood and becomes as much as an incarnation as God of God as Jesus Christ was. The believer is another Christ. Incidentally, many faith teachers such as Roddy Howard Brown say that Christ abandoned his true deity when he became a man. On earth he merely partook of God's nature in the sense that innocent Adam did as a perfect man. Jesus was not God in the flesh but a spirit filled prophet under the quote unquote Abrahamic covenant. And the A in Hank Hanegraaff's acrostic stands for atonement atrocities. Most, most Word of Faith movement teachers deny that Christ's death on the cross saves sinners. They teach that what really happened on the cross was that Jesus actually became sinful, that he became sin. He took on himself the spiritual nature of Satan, thus being transformed from a divine to a demonic being, the same thing that had happened to Adam in the Garden of Eden. This doctrine of the cross is often referred to in shorthand as JDS, which stands for Jesus died spiritually. They teach that the real opponent, the real atonement, atonement took place after Jesus died. For the demonized spirit of Jesus literally went into hell itself, where he was tortured by demons for three days and three nights in the center of the earth. Then Jesus was spiritually born in hell, recovering his lost divinity and defeating Satan. This same rebirth is granted to the believer who is thus liberated from his satanic nature and become God. So what they're what they're teaching here, Doyle, is we're not we're not if you're a Christian, you're not saved, it's not finished at on the cross. We're not saved by the blood of Christ, but we're saved by when Jesus died spiritually in hell, that he became the first born again man, and so when we become Christians we become really little gods, little incarnations of Jesus and, and we really partake of his divine nature this is what they believe in well so by a, by a person following this faith the word of faith movement they basically are turning themselves as you say into exact duplicates of Christ or God or becoming little gods here on earth hedonism 
Right. Okay. Now, are there, maybe real quick, is there some, if I was walking down the street, down a, in a big city, and I see all these different churches, are there specific churches that follow this doctrine more rigidly? Yeah, that's, that's the thing about trying to explain the word of faith one is that some of them will say, well, we don't believe in, you know, this aspect of what some other teacher believes. Some will say, well, we don't really believe, we're, we believe we're saved by the blood of Christ. We really don't teach that. For example, uh, Kenneth Copeland is big in, in Dallas, and, you know, he teaches all this, and we'll be quoting some quotes that he made. And Benny Hinn uh, teaches some stuff. Some of them teach some radical doctrine. They made Benny Hinn used to teach that, there were nine aspects of the Trinity that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit had. There were nine parts, and there's just so many aspects. Some of them, they it's hard to pinpoint doctrines on some of these guys. They say, "Well, that's what he teaches." You know, I don't, we don't, we don't teach this. So, but one of the main men who uh, really was the father of the Word of Faith and was a man named Kenneth Hagen from Oklahoma, and one of his disciples was was uh, Kenneth Copeland. And they, they just really borrow from each other's doctrines. Some of them just go expand it to something more more ridiculous. So the Word of Faith movement, as it could be termed, is saturated in many uh, mainstream religious ideas and also many mainstream churches in America. Right. Okay. Right. So it's I'm not going to walk down the street necessarily and see a Word of Faith church. Right. They, they, there's no really, I don't think there's no, there's no denomination known as a Word of Faith. You'll see it like... Assemblies of God, they're they're Pentecostals. You know, some of them actually get involved in this. There's a man in Korea uh, known as Paul Yangi Cho from the Assemblies of God, and he's big. He wrote a book called The Fourth Dimension, and he believes in all this affirmation you have to visualize. And, you know, and not and not everyone in the Assemblies of God believes in this, but you know, he he just one example of you know people from different denominations. For example, a lot of some some even some fundamental church like Baptists are starting to get into the ecumenical movement now. Okay, so the, these this ecumenical word of faith, etc., movements are saturating the churches just much like socialism. Right. Just creep creep right in and take over and establish their roots and then they slowly saturate the internal doctrines and change them and warp them to fit their agenda. Right. Okay. I'm well, sorry about that aside there. Why don't we go ahead and continue with some of your research here? Okay. And the W in the Hank Hanegraaff's acrostic stands for wealth and want, and they believe that poverty is a part of the curse of the law from which Christ has delivered believers, the Old Testament law. They believe that Christ himself, when he was on earth, was a basically a millionaire. He was a rich man. He wore design. Some of them teach that he wore designer clothes. And it's completely ridiculous. They teach that Jesus, some of them teach that Jesus had so much money that he had to appoint Judas, the man who betrayed him, Judas Iscariot, as his finance manager. And the reason why no one noticed that Judas was stealing was because that there was just so much money in the money bag. But, you know, if you read, I don't have the verse with me, but there's a verse in the Bible that say that Jesus had no where to lay his head. No, he had to lay his head in stones, nowhere to lay his head. So how can he be a rich man? But they say, well, since Jesus had a treasurer and a treasury, then well, that means Jesus was was wealthy and well off. And many, many faith teachers require their followers to give them money with the promise that God will repay them tenfold. And, that, and such giving is called sowing a seed of faith. For example, one man, a big man from the past, was big with uh, Billy Graham during the 50s when after World War II when these when these faith healers started coming about was Oral Roberts and he taught something called the seed of faith that if you sow they believe they take the passage from Galatians where it says what, what a man reaps you will sow and they take that and relate it to money saying if you sow into his ministry then you're going to you know if you reap in it you're, you're going to get a, a hundredfold return some of the teachers are going to get, you know, 500-fold return. And, you know, some of, them, some of the more extreme versions of this seed of faith and sowing a seed of faith, they believe that if you... They send different articles to people in the mail, and if you pray or send money and, re, and sign this article or 
some of them, some of them sent like Marilyn Hickey used to send like rubber bands, miracle rubber bands and pennies. And if you send it back to her, they it's really called a point of contact. And if this is in the occult too, and if you use this item that they send you like prayer cloths, and you send it back to them, then they'll pray over it with your money, and you're gonna get a blessing. You're gonna get out of poverty. So if they sent me a rubber band and I return that rubber band, this is a real example, right, yep. with uh, 10 bucks, then hypothetically they're going to pray over it and that's going to make a, a connection and they're going to visualize this word. Right. And I'm going to hypothetically get tenfold my $10. So I get $100 somewhere and we're going to be connected at this point. Right, yep. Okay. And that's basically what they teach in the occult is that uh, you use certain point of objects, like point of contact objects, like they use uh, talismans and amulets, and some of them use it when they in the occult and witchcraft they use objects like daggers or athames. They're that's their fancy title for their daggers or swords that they use in their rituals. And what they use, they basically some of them they put they bury it in the earth which is in they say that the powers of the mother earth or mother nature is going to go it's going to consecrate and bless this object and then later they use the object to do the rituals and they're going to receive blessings or material blessings and of course they have to do it through you know the power of affirmation the power of their mouth and commanding it and claiming it of course they have to think positively this is all. This is all in the New Age, mid the mystery schools. It's it's all creeping into Christianity now. Yeah, much you know they're they're worshiping Mother Gaia, just like the uh, ninefold Trinity is simply three squared again. And by worshiping Gaia and burying their article in the earth and commanding it, willing it, visualizing it, they're supposedly getting returns from Mother Gaia. Right. Earth worship. Okay. Well. Why don't we continue on with the flaw here? Okay, and the last part that Hank Kennegraff uses in his book is the S, and that stands for sickness and suffering. And this is really connected to the wealth. They say, well, it's not God's will to be poor, so it's God's will that we shouldn't be sick or in pain. These two are demonic powers from which Christ has delivered believers, is what they teach. We must claim, again, claim our healing by faith speak our health into existence by positive confession. Because man is essentially a spirit who merely lives in a body, sickness and, health and healing are essentially spiritual, not bodily realities. So physical symptoms of illness persist after we have claimed our healing. That is just what our bodily senses tell us. We must deny this sense knowledge by the higher spirit knowledge of faith which knows that healing has truly occurred in the spiritual realm. So again, this is what, you know, connected to the wealth movement is that they teach that they use verses like in Isaiah that we, by his stripes we are healed. You know, if you read that again, it, it really means spiritual healing. Jesus died for your sins. It's, it's a prophecy of Jesus coming that we're, we're, we're healed spiritually by his stripes, but but they, they extend it and say, well, it's not God's will for be, us to be in pain. You know, it's God's will that we're always going to be healthy. But if you, if, and we're going to get into this later, if you look at a lot of these word of faith movements like uh, Joyce Meyer, Paul Crouch's wife, Jan Crouch, all these leaders that are in the faith movement, a lot of them had or have cancer. So, <laughs> and Jan Crouch actually went to the hospital recently this year it might have been last year too she went she was in a hospital for cancer try to heal cancer chemotherapy you know if these people have all this power through their faith this faith movement which they teach in this positive confession they could claim their healing you know how come they're not healing themselves why did they have to go to the hospitals to get chemotherapy it doesn't make sense yeah because they should be able to, to command that the cancer will be gone visualize it and then manifest it according to their doctrine. Right. Yeah, so again, it's just the same old, like, socialism lies, but they creep in and um, infiltrate and absorb institutions that people think are, well, safe, 
main, uh, mon rather mundane per se, and uh, slowly alter them to fit their agenda. Right. Okay. Right. So again, that can you briefly just recap with exactly the anacronym flaws and just what each letter means, real quick. Just, okay. Just the exact, you know, F equals this. Well, the five main aspects of the word of faith when the Hank Hancraft uses is flaws, F-L-A-W-S, and it stands for faith and faith, that faith is a spiritual force, is a basic law of the universe that we we have to use, and L is little guys, the idea that we're, we regain our godhood when we become Christians, the atonement atrocities, the, the idea that Jesus died spiritually, we're not saved by the blood of Christ, but Jesus died spiritually. So when we become Christians, we become really little deities walking on earth. The W is the health and want movement that we're not, it's not God's will for us to be poor, but that we will always be rich and we will always have what we want. And the S stands for sickness and suffering, the idea that, again, connected to the wealth movement, that it's not God's will that we will ever be sick or in suffering, that we will always be healthy. All right, Rob, uh, that's a whole bunch of information already. And this is just simply, ladies and gentlemen, a brief overview of what we're going to be getting into over the next two or three weeks. So you can see you need to be writing down information. Now we can't constantly provide this research again without your assistance. So please, you need to donate for research materials. These shows, for instance, today's broadcast, yesterday's, it, any broadcast, it's a... Uh, if you're a, a non-Hot Club member, it's uh, $10 postage paid. And we shoot it right out. You can either mail that here to the address, P.O. Box 940, Eager, Arizona, 85925. Or simply use PayPal. Pick what you'd like for your donation. And we'll get it right off to you. And uh, there, was a, there were, has been ones that the Postal Service has messed up via scanning them. Uh, opening them and jostling them around because they love to search our mail, go outgoing especially, and uh, just simply contact us. People have, and we shoot out a replacement immediately. It's no biggie, and because uh, we know what happens. Now, uh, we're going to take, Rob, a quick musical break here. Uh, let everybody get their brains situated because we've been okay. dumping a lot at them. And then... Uh, Return back with more of this word and faith movement now that you've given the rough definitions, the basic outline premises of the movement. And I want to talk more after the break. People involved heavily that have really pushed this forward uh, in America and around the world through into mainstream churches and some years and dates and critical writings, okay? Okay.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're here listening to the Hour of the Time today, the 13th of July, Wednesday, 2005, and I want to remind everybody that, again, we have a very special guest on today, uh, Rob, and we're going to have him on several times uh, with this theme talking about New Age, religious movements, dispensationalism, word of faith. We're going to be covering a lot of this subject, and again, much of Bill's uh, original work came from uh, Rob and his research. Um, they compiled it. And um, for the example, we prefaced the last couple days with, for instance, uh, portions of three of the broadcasts that Bill had done years ago, 591, 592, and 593 out of the catalog, to give you an idea and tie this in uh, 12 years apart with new research, etc. Now you're listening to the Hour of the Time on WBCQ The Planet. 7.415 megahertz and 9.330 megahertz out of Monticello, Maine. Now, Rob is, uh, I know many people are going to want more information, more discussion, etc., and we're going to really give them a bunch over the next three weeks at least on the air. Um, they're also going to want to probably contact you personally. I'm not going to try to act as a, a medium between you and the audience with hardcore questions and something that I haven't thoroughly researched. Uh, is there a way they can contact you with e via email? Uh, go ahead and give the audience that. Yeah, people can email me at rltwoco at aol.com. rltwoco at aol.com. Right. Okay, and then they just, of course, Rob. And uh, it's Rob from the U.S., ladies and gentlemen. So don't send our webmaster and co-host a bunch of questions about word of faith movement please okay unless you strictly forgot that address rltwoco at aol.com and you just start getting wanting the address from us again or i'll forward it on one time two times maybe but don't direct me with critical questions about this guy said this in 1939 what book is it in because i haven't researched every single little aspect of these movements We've given good overviews on the air. This is where people that specialize in areas that have proven their research, checked it three and four different directions. That's why we have them on the air, to help us bring you information. Okay, Rob, why don't you go on with the uh, Word of Faith movement, I guess, and some more descriptive outline here to give everybody a uh, summary today. Okay. So we gather from all, all of this 
that we, we, we just talked about before, that the word of faith in one movement's belief in health, wealth, and prosperity is only one of its many false doctrines. Far more serious are his her heretical teachings about God, Christ, and salvation. And we're going to get into all these aspects of what they, what they teach. The question to ask ourselves is, if these faith movement leaders teach deadly heresy and destructive error, how can it be that the Holy Spirit that is at work in their meetings and ministries? Remember, we have to remember that the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. John 15, 26 says, When a helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth. Again, the spirit of truth. Who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Alrighty. Um, again, what verse was that, please? That's in John 15, 26. Alrighty. And in John 16, 14... And John 16 verse 14 says, He will glorify me, meaning the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. But these word of faith teachers do not teach the truth about Christ, and they do not glorify the Christ of the scriptures, but a Christ of their own imaginations, such as a Christ who is not Almighty God in the flesh, Christ who is rich, a Christ who became demonized on the cross and atoned for sin spiritually in hell rather than by his blood on the cross. A Christ who was only the incarnation of God in the sense that according to them, every believer is an incarnation of God. It's no wonder that writers such as Hayne Canegraaff and Dan McConnell, who wrote the book A Different Gospel, and others have concluded that the faith movement gospel is a different gospel from 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 3 and 4. So we are faced, what we are faced with is that the word of faith movement is another gospel, another Jesus, and another Holy Spirit. The true Holy Spirit of God will never honor, sanction, or give credence to the ministries of people who teach these errors. Whatever spiritual power is at work through men like Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, and Ronnie Howard Brown one must conclude that is not the spirit of truth. And briefly, what we want to do is we want to try to now get involved into, try to go more in detail of the aspects of the word of faith. There's the five main areas again. And there's also all the little areas that they teach. Some of them teach, some of them don't teach it, and some expand from other teachers. And some of them are kind of radical beliefs. But like for example, again, the eighth the F and the flaws acrostic was faith and faith. And they teach that there's a force of faith. There's a force of faith in the universe. They say that there's a force of faith in the, our words, our verbal words are the containers of the force. So, the, so by the power of our words, we can create our realities. And they, the chapter they quote from is in Hebrews 11, 1, and they say that, and it says that now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So they, they try to take that and say, well, it's a substance of things hoped for, meaning that we have to have a substance, which is, you know, faith is a force, and our words are these containers or the substance of the force. So when we use our faith, then we could get these things that we don't see, and they will appear to us. Okay, again, just uh, basically taking the teachings of the Bible out of context, and then if we say them and will them to be, they will be. Right. Okay. But if you look at Hebrews 11, 1, where it says, Faith is a substance of things hoped for. They take that to mean that, well, it's, 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 our, re it's a container of the, our words are the containers of the force. We can create a ra reality. But that word substance in that verse is all it means is trust or assurance. Our faith is our trust. Another word for faith is trust. We have faith and we trust in our assurance that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. That's this is what this verse is talking about. It's not saying that we can create our own realities by faith filled words. It's saying that faith is our assurance in Christ that He died for us for our sins. Well then I would ask then if if I was a follower of this doctrine, Word of Faith movement, if I told myself enough times that I can fly, and I just keep saying it and willing it, am I going to start flying tomorrow? 
that's according to their doctrine then you have to if you if you positively believe that it that you can fly if that's your will then it will have to come to pass but their excuse is if you, if you don't if you can't fly or after you positively confess if if you don't become rich or you're not cured from a disease or an illness if if this is like on the past it's not their fault it's not Benny Hinn's fault it's not Kenneth Copeland's fault it's really your fault because and we're going to get into this later too is that maybe it's really the person's fault that's doing it maybe you didn't have enough faith they'll say that you well you didn't have enough faith so if you can't fly if you're still sick it's not it's not Benny Hinn's fault it's your fault because you didn't have enough faith or they'll say that you had a secret sin in your life, or you didn't positively confess right. You, you you know you didn't sow into the ministry correctly. This you know this is what excuses that they use. And when you say so, it's as in tithing, tithing or tithing into their ministries. Okay, is there? I've heard this thing about flying and stuff. Do they actually do try to take that from the Bible also? Benny Hinn takes it in in Genesis where it talks about when God we're, we're going to have dominion over the earth and we will have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh, Benny Hinn used to teach that when it says that we will have dominion over the earth and over the skies that that means that God that Adam flew in the Garden of Eden. God Adam could have had the power to fly. This is what he believes, and he he used to teach that. The same thing that was since God Adam had dominion over the you know fish of the sea that means that Adam could have breathed and lived under the water and swim under the water and it's just later on he says well I, I shouldn't have said that but later he, he he really he believes in this he still believes in this doctrine he just tries to say well I don't believe in this anymore but he still teaches this doctrine you know he's a teacher and there's nine versions of of the Trinity there's that the Holy Spirit Jesus and God the Father each had three parts, so they each had a body, soul, and spirit. So there's, he used to teach us nine of them. There's this, this used to be in his book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, and that book's been revised so many times, you know, it's unbelievable. And, you know, there's other ministries who have, you know, the original copies, but he just took it out and changed it and said, I never taught that. You know, it's it's unbelievable. Okay. All right, well, let me continue on here. Okay, and they again they say that the word substance has to do with objects, that it's objects, and it, what we taught before is that it has to do with trust or assurance, the word substance. And they also teach in the formula of faith, that there's formulas and laws that we have to use to use our faith to get what, you know whatever we want. And they believe in confession, something called positive uh, confessions, and they I would use a verse from Mark that they use. Okay, and now Rob, this is uh, all very, very important and interesting material that the audience really needs to understand. So again, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to be writing down this information. And again, if you uh, would like, you can donate. Your support to the hour of the time, and we, if you re want to request this tape or several of the tapes on down the line we're doing on this subject, uh, certainly do so. It's good to share with your family, your neighbors, open up their eyes to the lies that abound out there. And again, it is, again, simply when it comes down to it, the ideals of socialism that's really you're following the same thing as far as the approach and tactics of indoctrination and taking over established ways in this country and in the world. All right, where was that verse again? That was in, they take a verse from Mark chapter 11, verse 23, and it says, For verily, truly, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So they take this verse, and again in the part where it says, and shall not doubt in his heart. So according to them, that you have to positively confess 
whatever you want. They again they teach you that words are the faith, force of faith, and we have to positively confess what we want, and it'll come to pass because they this is what they believe in Mark eleven twenty three. Mm -hmm. And one one of, there's a couple formulas that some of them uh, quote. And one is this, and it said, and they believe you have to say it, you have to do it, you have to receive it, and then you have to tell it. So you have to say it with your mouth, you have to do it, and which is really the same thing. Do it and say it by the words of your mouth. You have to affirm it. You have to receive it or claim it, and then you tell it. Meaning you tell it out loud. You have to affirm it through your your positive confession. Another another belief is that uh, you have to visualize again. You have to visualize what you want, and again, this is another aspect of of the occult, the mysteries that you have to visualize things in your mind, and it'll come to pass. Now, so again, back to the visualization, saying at those three points there. Uh, again, recap them real briefly. Uh, you have to say it. Do it, receive it, and then tell it. Okay, so if I say I'm going to breathe and swim underwater like the fishes tomorrow, and then do it, just affirming it. Right. And you have to affirm it through the, you have to use a force of faith, and your words are the containers of your force. So you, you have to positively confess it by the power of affirmation, which is the power of your mouth, and it'll come to pass. Okay, and so I'm then I'm going to go out in the front yard and I'm going to shout it today out. And according to their beliefs, then it has to come to pass. Okay, well, I'm going to try real hard, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to visualize. And I'm going to go out in front and yell. I want to swim like the fishes and breathe underwater. So if I'm not in the air tomorrow, you'll know I drowned. But I'm really going to try because that seems pretty interesting to try to do. There's some good trout lakes up here. They, they Again, they teach that you have to visualize in your mouth some say you have to visualize it then you have to stake your claim again this is the same thing as say it do it receive it tell it you have to stake your claim and they believe you have to you have to believe that you're going to get it before you even get it so before you even do this you have to believe it in your mind you have to stake your claim then you speak it and this again this is the power in the occult they believe in the power of affirmation the power of your mind uh, you have to visualize it again, and what they're really teaching is something in the occult, in Hermeticism called this is the Hermetic doctrine again in the mysteries, known as the microcosm and the macrocosm. And they teach that in the occult that the macrocosm is the greater deity or the greater God, and that we are really little microcosms of the mi macrocosm, meaning that we are little aspects of the universe or little aspects of God again that what that means is the macrocosm is a spiritual and the microcosm is us the material or the physical plane and it's a quote that they use a famous quote is called as above so below which means that whatever happens in the spiritual world will manifest itself into the physical world Again, this is what they're teaching the Word of Faith movement, is that as above, whatever happens in the spiritual world, by us visualizing it and affirming it, then it's going to manifest itself into the material world. And this is what they teach in the Hermetic Doctrine of, of Correspondence and all these laws. Again, this is what the mystery te religions teach, is that there's certain laws of the universe. Karma, of course, we're going to get into karma of what... The word of faith teaches of reap and sow. What they're really teaching is karma to their, to their audience. Uh, Pat Robertson used to teach in his book about the laws of the kingdom. Again, the laws. That there's a law of reciprocity, which means that... Uh, reciprocity. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And whatever we we uh, it's again, reap and sow. And what we sow into his ministry, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get... You know, a hundredfold. And they all, they, these guys, they all use this, especially on TBN. They use, uh, whenever they have money fundraisers, this is what they use. You know, they're really teaching their audience karma, reap and sow. This is their doctrine. The reciprocity movement, TBN. Is that the Beast Network or what is that? Yeah, that's one of the big leaders of uh, bringing the ecumenical movement and charismatic movement. And, of course, TBN. Uh, 
700 Club by Pat Robson. Of course, he sold that to Rupert Murdoch for like a billion dollars. Now it's ABC Family. Uh-huh. But TBN has been there for like 35 years, and they're, you know, they're, they have all these people on all the aspects. They're bringing all this about, you know, it's all ecumenical. One, they only want a one world church, and it's, we're going to talk about later how it's all connected to the Catholic Church and the Vatican. All right, good. Let's go on to another aspect here you were wanting to cover, Rob. What was that next? Okay, well, when what they teach is when you have to use your, your word of the mouth and you have to use these words and speak them aloud through the power of positive confession, you affirm them. What they're really teaching is is, is mantras from Hinduism, is that you got to repeat words. And later on, we're going to talk about in these revivals how when they do these revivals, and it's all all these it's all connected to the Toronto movement, all these people, the Pensacola revival that was you know started about ten years ago. When they whenever they have their music uh, ministries, that they repeat the same songs again. So it's what they're really doing is mantras in these revivals, and it's really gets people into like altered states of consciousness. Or we're, we're going to talk about that later. But again, they again the verb. Verse they quote from is Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Okay, Proverbs eighteen twenty one, and this is again one of the verses where they take from the Bible to try to give a foundational legitimacy to their teachings, and then they of course take their own interpretation way out there. Okay, in Proverbs eighteen twenty one it says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof." So again, they say that life and death are in the power of our tongue, the power of our words. So we could, and if you love, of course, positively confess and love the power of the tongue, then we shall eat whatever, according to them, we'll eat whatever we want. You know, we could be living perfectly, healthily, we'll be rich, we'll never have suffering ever again. They believe that if you do suffer again, this is not God's will. And they, they say that verbal confessions brings forth the force of faith and activates the spiritual laws again positive confessions obviously activate positive the positive side of the force of faith and of course negative confessions will activate negative sides of the force of faith and they teach the faith of God they say that God when he created the world has to use faith filled world words in spiritual laws so when he created, when God created the universe and everything, he had to use faith-filled word, words and speak them positively into existence. That God is subject to these spiritual laws. But if God is the creator of the universe, Doyle, how, why would he have to be subject to laws? Why does he? God doesn't need faith. We need faith to believe in God. Yes, exactly. God does not need faith in himself to will something to happen. Right. Okay. And a verse they quote from is Mark 11. Mark 11. Okay. Mark 11, verse 22. Okay. Mark 11, 22. And it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, the apostles said unto them, Have faith in God. And again, this is from verse 23. Again, it says, For verily I say unto you that, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he said. So they, again, they teach from Mark 11, 22 and 23, that we have to have faith in God. And according to them, the faith in God means that, again, we we have to positively confess you know, in our hearts, and we will get whatever we want through their, their doctrines. Okay, well... Well, we got to wrap it up here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is just a very scant overview of what we're going to be covering on the dispensationalism, ecumenical movements, New Age religion, faith movement, word of faith movement, Calvinism over the next uh, several broadcasts and how it ties into the mystery school movement and the followers. And you're going to be hearing a lot of names, dates, places, verses, book titles etc so you really need to pay attention 
you need to share this with your family and friends and you need to support us so we can keep this information coming out there again um, hour of the time PO box 940 eager spelled e-a-g-a-r Arizona 85925 hour of the time PO box 940 eager Arizona 85925 the website hour of the time dot com and remember ladies and gentlemen if you'd like to donate for any of these uh, particular broadcasts, whether past from the same research and researcher that helped Bill or the current, just simply the date, title number, etc. And uh, we'll shoot that off very quickly. And that helps keep the hour of the time operation going and putting out the word on the airwaves and over the internet. And Rob, I want to thank you for being on with us today, uh, the 13th of July, Wednesday. Okay, thanks, Doyle. And uh, we'll continue definitely on with this series over the next several broadcasts. Yeah, we have a lot, a lot to talk about. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Again, thank you for tuning in. and Be sure to tune in every day to the hour of the time.
This is now. You're already in the new world order. You're already in the new world order. World order. What sort of creature inhabits the modern domain? Who is the modern man? He is the smartest, most advanced individual to ever strut the planet. The most relatively liberated being in history. He scoffs with great division at the idea of the existence and operation of a technology of mass mind control emanating from the media and government. Modern man believes that he is much too smart to believe anything as superstitious as that. But the truth is, modern man 